Hello and welcome to GLADIS 2 for Scripting and Parametric Design, Fall 2022. We'll go over a brief table of contents. So we'll go over the actual program itself, what GLADIS 2 is and why we've made it, the common glasses elements, overall script, key variables, this video link, and also all the component library and interface directory, as well as the ultimate design results, test frame, and future directory and the information as far as where you can find documentation and downloads. The design of glasses is a very challenging expert problem. The reason being is that there are a large number of variables, pre-existing and specialty components, and the difficulty of manufacturing. There are a small number of manufacturers with a few market controllers and a few independent marketers and producers in the United States. The reason why we created Gladys too is that we can create an intuitive user interface for someone to go about making glasses themselves of any design and form that they feel like. As such, we've made Gladys 2 with the intention of 3D printing as optimized production technology. Lenses can be created either via paper templates and literally tracing and cutting, or using a laser cutter for more precise fitment. A couple common glasses features are frame width, the nose bridge width, the lens height and lens width, temple and arm depths, and the hook position and angle. The overall scripting network that we've developed allows us to link a number of specialty modules which handle input and output data and information between different key variables and then on a user interface platform for easy control. Key variable domains are frame width, generally 125 to 150 millimeters, nose bridge width, which is 14 to 24 millimeters, lens height and width, which are 32 to 45 and 40 to 60 millimeters respectively, the temple and arm depths width are 125 to 150 millimeters, and the hook position and angle, which are usually 0.65 to 0.75 of the temple or arm length and then about 10, negative 10 to 22 degrees. This is the video demo and walkthrough. If you have any further questions, you can address the documentation at the end of this presentation via Hackaday. The component library that we've developed is, involves constructing the frame shape, the lens outline shapes, glasses and inserts, and the final rotation and finish of the geometry. The first component is construct frame, which develops a width guide, temple arm curves, displacement, and location of end pieces, as you'll see later in the user interface. The construct lenses component develops the bridge position, lens base style, and dimensions, including the thickness to be inset in the frame, along with the frame thickness acting as a limit to prevent you from creating occlusions. The shape filter handles the subshape options of the lens type, including rounding, number of sides for a base polygon, or for allowing one to bring in a custom component. The lens solid component develops thickness around the lens shape and also provides a geometry to be Boolean intersected with the frame body. Lens inset determines how far the lens body is extruded further into the frame so that you can create a snap together assembly. The end piece and hinge connection component replaces part of the temple length with a new connection which allows for joints. The end piece and hinge connection component replaces a small length of the, the temple with a hinge so that one can then 3D print in place or as multiple pieces the hinge that will then be used in the end glasses design to allow for folding. This is an overview of the interface UI directory. We have head options, frame parameters, lens parameters, any other associated options that one may need in order to modify the design. Starting in the upper left hand side of the scripting window, you'll see head model options. There are three current options available. In the future, we expect that people will be able to upload 3D scans or selfies into the system to allow for more accurate visualization. The frame width and tilt parameters allow one to determine the true width of their glasses as often found on the inside of your existing glasses if you have them as the first number, as well as controlling the rotation and finish, which changes the lens angle as occurs the eye line. The bridge width and temple length control the gap between, you would say, your nose or the most narrow point between the glasses lenses, and the temple length is how deep 
from the front of the frames you reach to your ears. This also allows you to control your hook position, in this case set to 0.8 or 0.8 of whatever the final tempo length would be. This was the, the start of your curve and that allows you to adjust your hook angle, in this case negative 19 degrees. The lens shape, style, width, and height parameters are exactly as they appear. In the lens parameters, there are three base shapes you can choose from. Zero, which is circular, one, rectangular or polygon, and two free curve shapes. If you select free curve shapes, there are a couple of available pre-options. You can use the drop-down menu to pick between them. These are usually very organic shapes. We'll get into how you can add your own custom shapes later. Here you can also control your lens width, height, frame thickness, the radius of the fillet if you select option 1, and then you can also choose the thickness of the lenses themselves. The special shapes module is a hidden module which one can access by unhiding item as shown on the right bottom of these user customized shapes. One can then draw on the ZX plane as shown here by this green curve or any other substitute curve you would like. It will automatically be moved to the lens center position using this component where it will also be scaled to your desired width and height parameters. The frame material thickness, insets, and thickness for lens control parameters control the radius of the piping of the frame body itself, the end cap styling, and also handles the geometry back and forth between the lens shape in order to make sure that they match up geometrically. Here are additional specifications on the hinge design used in Gladys 2. Users can change the lens and frame preview display colors for visualization purposes. However, these attributes will not be exported into Rhino or for production purposes. Additionally, due to the difficulty of prescription lens construction and manufacturing, Gladys 2 is only able to produce flat lenses at this moment. Lenses can be constructed from materials such as mica, polarized film, acrylic, or etc. using either laser cut or paper templates. Our printed test frame was produced by Tronix 3D in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This frame is made out of multi-jet fusion nylon with lenses made of mica and linear polarizers on the bottom half in order to create a quarter wave plate incident effect. Based off of the development process of Gladys 2, there are a number of improvements that we're expecting for Gladys 3. Those would be importing of 3D scans of custom heads, auto positioning of the head in the frame workspace, manual head scaling and positioning for stock options, a simpler export workflow, better hinge variations and print in place components, nose pad options which are not currently available, a UI based lens shape editor for easier inclusion, Grasshopper player integration for dialogue based interaction, a lens sweep function which would control the backward flex and curvature of the lenses, and then also curve lens and prescription lenses, export files for optometrists, and a dimension based temple adjustment rather than vector based. Further improvements for Gladys 3 will be dividing the script into even more dedicated components and relationships given certain key parameters. We also expect additional frame shape alternatives rather than just round piping, such as square or variable thickness surfaces based on material selection, which also brings us to theoretical raw material price calculation and limitations. We also need to improve lens seating or gapping to allow for installation and density optimization and reinforcement at all junctions. This will also involve fillets and other parametric features to assess an assembly. And then, finally, we need to format appropriately for Rhino servers so that we can widely distribute this print. 
We appreciate your interest in GLADIS2. If you need additional information or access to public data, it can be found on Hackaday or by contacting us at our emails found below. Thank you very much. Hi, and welcome to the GLADIS2 live demo. You can see that user inputs are primarily on the left side of your screen. You can zoom in to access head model options, frame parameters, lens parameters, including shapes and subshape features. You can change your head rendering preview. You can change your glasses preview. By previewing this component, you can see the lens shape that is being generated as a result. If you were to add your own custom shape, you must increment the index up and then add that geometry to this list. We can also see all the geometry handling pipeline for associations and relationships. We will also find the inset distance for the lenses into the frame and their operationals that will change the Boolean difference and mirroring about the axis as well as combining the end result into a solid model frame. And then we also find minor transformations such as the lens angle in relation to the eye line and also the frame thickness piping.